Pigeon pop-up oh. surprise. Paul Childerly goes all stealthy on crop raiding birds with three different 410 shotguns. We ask, will steel kill the calibre? But the ones I absolutely love are these. These are the winners, the green ones. Who's the top sporting shot in the world? We go to the World English Sporting Championship to watch 1,600 shooters battle it out. This is one of the biggest ones of the year. And big game fishing is back. DEFRA gets off its backside to name 25 lucky charter vessels that can take you fishing out of Cornwall. We have a competition for you to win kit from Clooney Country Store priced at more than £100. We're talking about a new rifle scope with Ryan Charlton from Highland Outdoors. David has the news on the news stump and James Marchington offers up the best hunting and shooting videos in hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Decisions, decisions, when it comes to the pigeons. Put that really where it is, bring the hide back to here. Ah. <laughs> so come on. Right, do you want to know what's going on? I do want to know what's going on. Right, so, what you're doing is going, I know, because it's all gone wrong. Because basically, these pigeons are coming up this flight line, up this pylon, through the gap here, pissing out here. Everything was out here, about five, 600 pigeons out here. Yeah, there. yeah I know, there's about thousand over there pitching in the middle of this crop. Uh, what I might do is basically bring the hide back to the hedge, bring the whirly in to the first tram line, and give that a go. David, <laughs> we're going to try it there first. Change the plan. Yeah, we're going to give that a go. I'm just going to change that hide a bit. Obviously, it stands. You need commitment, Chudley. It stands out there like a sore thumb. So we're going to basically I can't see it. Where is it? <laughs> lower it a little bit, put a bit more colour on it, yellowy colour. And then uh, stick cut the pins on the whirly, and we'll be in business, I think. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> Paul's plan has not gone to plan as he'd planned. When we finally get set up, Paul is going to be shooting four tens, three of them. The reasons, he really enjoys got shooting a four ten. Sometimes it's important to be considerate and there is a footpath close by. And finally, he wants to shoot it while he still can. More on that Hello. in a mo. One for one. Oh, well, we've been in it for about a minute as well, so... We could be right then. So we're going to hear the, the critics, we call it. Right, we're set up in the middle of the field. These pins are not on any flat weight, they're, in, they're coming down in the thin bits in the middle. So hence we're out on second, tram, second third tram line out to see if we can get a couple, so... The farmer said it's okay. Yep, we had the, we had the permission, I could do one track going out. I thought it would be like a two metre square hide. We've got the dogs, so we're going to count them down. One down so far, and there, we will pick them up. We'll probably do like 10, 15 and get the dogs and pick them up. Good plan. If we get 10, 15. If we get 10, 15, that's a good I hit 10, 15. <laughs> It's obvious none of this is working, and we need another plan. David, I don't want you to film it. Failure. <laughs> Just line the crop. Okay, sit in the crop then, shall we? Yeah. Seated. This time we're going in naked. No hide, just crop cover. See, this actually reminds me of what I used to be like with the 410 when I was younger. Literally, I could shoot the crows and jackals and rooks on the, um, the milky barley and they didn't take a hide, they literally just go out and crate down the crop. A little bit bigger now though. Here we go, 12 o'clock, they're coming now anyway. Oh, it's not in the... Oh, f sake. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a three yard pigeon. I know, but I got about two inch pattern. Right, now we're ready. One for one. <laughs> <laughs> one for one. <laughs> oh. Last minute. Oh. Considering we are now winging it, Paul Good does job. actually shoot some birds. That one, all right.
Oh, too blij. Is dat toch? Ja. Just. Get him. Yeah. <laughs> Hot barrels now. It's hard. It's so hard. Tell me about this particular 410. This is your go-to, is it? Yeah, I use this one a lot for game shooting um, through the season. And uh, I shot a few hundred birders with it as well, play shooting. Shoot quite well with it. It's old Airway A number four. Oh, it's fancy one for a long, long time. And um, just wanted to pick up a nice second hand one. So I did about five years ago. And uh, yeah, beautiful little gun. Nice and light. <laughs> the hide, the hide's in the way. Yeah, nice and light. A few cartridges in the pocket. So you haven't got loads of weight. I haven't got loads of recoil. And to be fair, with these cartridges, you shot some cracking stuff with it in the season. And know your limits. You've got to know your limits with it. You don't, you know, you're not shooting at 80 yard, at 78 yard, high, tall cock pheasants in the wind. You know, no chance, no even point. But, uh, you know, average pheasant, average partridge, any day of the week. As we can sense, this is not going to be a long afternoon in the field. Paul brings out the other 410s he's brought along, including one with the hush power silencer. It looks okay. When you put it up, it's uh, quite hard to look down the top of the barrel because it's so big. It's like really... Basically, I'm closing one eye. Okay. Rifle shooting it. That was nothing. They're quiet. Didn't like that, did he? Got him? Yep. Well done. Now I've got a bit more faith. Yeah. Down. But it doesn't do a... hasn't got a very good pattern. So that one is going away. Okay. Quiet though. Very quiet. Does the job. Very cool. But not as cool as the hammer. Hammer time. Too? Yes, this one's mine. This is the one I started with. It's a non-ejector. It's really fiddly. But obviously, see them I mean, coming. With the bird and the speed they're coming in. Yes. That's going to be an issue. Yes. As you can see, there's no, um, no safety catch. So the safety catch is actually the hammer. So when you pull the hammer back, it cocks the trigger. So, mm -hmm. so when, it's actually not a great the guns for people to learn with because there's no safety catch either on or off. Mm. Um, obviously the time you pulled back the trigger when something come in, pull back the, yeah, pull back the hammer, the time something's coming in, it's not so, uh, it's a bit slow, so. It's quite a good little gun. We we'll say good it is in a minute. Sounded different, isn't it? Oh yes. Get it? Yeah, of course. With sense of humour failure just around the corner, we decide to call it a day. The sad thing is that with steel on the horizon, the information the trade has given us is that 410 shells in steel are good for nothing. There's just not enough punch. I like, I mean I've done, done them all to be fair, and I've not done one or two, I've done a lot. Um, and you've got like the four tens, you've got the four longs, got the three inch magnums. Um, these RC magnums are really good. You see them there? RC. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. RC magnums, they're, they're really good, work really well. Um, there's some high pheasant, whole high pheasant. They're, they're, they're quite good. The crimp ones are actually I find a lot better than the than the ones with the um, with the paper. Oh. I don't know why. Again, that might be just pressures. Pressure maybe. Um, I, I, the you know back to the same thing again. The the, the Ely four long, great sort of traditional um, little four ten cartridge. Good for a starter starter cartridge for a, for a youngster because it doesn't kick not much bang, but it is twelve point five grams. Whereas these other ones are like 18, 19 grams, um, 19 gram six is these uh, whole high pheasants. Um, some, some two inch um, live there. 
Um, but the ones I absolutely love are these. These are the winners, the green ones. Um, I use four, 18 gram four Fiocchis. They are, maybe it's because my favorite color, green. Mm -hmm. They are, they are the one I, my go-to when I use um, seven and a half for I shoot the clays with as well. But these, dun dun dun, these are the ultimate four ten cartridge. I don't even want to know how much they cost. A friend give me some of the way swapped. But these are like, <laughs> shoo, look at look how silky they are. These are like the old school. Look at they're beautiful, aren't they? Look at that crimp dens. How do you how many do you smoke a day? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like that. Yeah, about that, about that sort of price as well. I think I'm not 100 percent sure. I think they're about a pound each. Right. But they are the kitty. Well, thank you very much today. Interesting. <laughs> that was interesting pigeon shooting. That was. Uh, we worked hard today. I mean, there's a lot of pigeons here. Yeah, we could do with a bit of flat corn. It was meant to be bright sunshine. They're meant to be coming in perfect, 20, 30 yard pigeons. Instead, we had fast flaring pigeons in the wind. So great sport. We kept them off the crop. We seen some interesting hide antics, antics and which didn't help with the uh, shooting skills. <laughs> One shell Paul was hoping to try but wasn't available on time was Lyle Vale's new offer maybe next time. The comedy cockers Duke and Maverick bounce their way through the wheat and pick the birds that Paul has dropped. It was a quiet day for a couple of reasons. Happily, he's still got enough lead shells tucked away for a few more 410 outings. Thank you, Paul. Now, this week's prize draw is for the discerning game and clay shooter. It's a gun slip and a skeet vest kindly donated by Clooney Country Store to mark the gun shop's comprehensive new website, cloonycountrystore.co.uk, which lists them both and much, much more for the pest controller, air gun and deer stalker and more. Uh, it consists of a Hogs of Fife Struther shooting vest priced at £59.95 and a Clooney Country shotgun slip priced at £45. And there's a link to the website below. If you want to win this prize, easiest way to enter the competition is to join the Field Sports Nation and watch their special Tuesday night show, Field Sports Extra. Link to that below too. It's a good time to join. Jack Pike has sent us another 50 rucksacks for a new membership push in July. You pay £50 for the membership, £4.99 for the postage, and we send you this canvas bag plus goodies such as Gunlock and Field Sports Channel Beanie, totaling £45 worth of kit. What a bargain. Next definitely not suspended from work, though he might pay you for a Zoom call. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Your shoot could get conservation cash from a major new government scheme, but you'll have to form an orderly queue. DEFRA and the National Lottery Heritage Fund is inviting environmental not-for-profit organisations, national park authorities and AONBs, local authorities, farmers and land managers to dip into the £25 million pot called the Species Survival Fund for habitat work in England. You can claim up to £3 million to create or restore habitats with work that you must complete within two years. Send in your expression of interest by the 24th of July 2023. Full applications must be submitted by October 2023. Link below. The RSPB has revealed how it plans to trap rats and ferrets in Northern Ireland. The conservation organisation has £4.5 million of public and lottery money, which it secured in 2021 to carry out the cull on just 3,000 acres of land on Rathlin Island. It says it spent a year in preparation and is now laying 450 traps with wireless monitoring and 6,000 bait stations at a budget of £700 per location. Locals introduced ferrets to Rathlin in the 1980s to combat the rabbit population and soon found they eat rare seabirds too. The RSPB usually opposes predator control. However, in cases where there is significant budget available, such as Rathlin and Orkney, it is prepared to set its principles aside. Basque has asked the government to act over banking bias towards shooting businesses. In the wake of Nigel Farage's revelations that his bank had closed his account, Basque wrote to the Treasury to tell them that shooting businesses, clubs and syndicates are suffering discrimination with sudden unexplained account closures and new account applications refused. 
Basque points out that shooting sports are a lawful activity and should not be treated as potentially criminal by the banking sector. Field sports groups in Scotland are opposing the government's proposed new rules on deer shooting. Basque, the Scottish Gamekeepers Association and the Countryside Alliance say that the removal of closed seasons for all male deer in Scotland from the 21st of October 2023 so that male deer may be shot year round in Scotland will only serve to reduce the quality of the deer herd and not reduce deer numbers. This is going to cause welfare issues. Uh, we are going to be chasing stags around on the hill uh, after the rut. Uh, they will not have had an opportunity to gain the weight and the health they need following the rut when they will be in a poor condition. If these stags are being shot then they will go to market in a very poor condition which means that the local economy will suffer not to mention the health and, and welfare of both the, the, the stags and the herd themselves. Police in Scotland have dealt with a pack of stock killing dogs. Officers shot four of them which were chasing sheep near Moffat and rounded up the remaining six. Police have not revealed whether they have traced the owner or owners of the dogs. A public appeal raised thousands of pounds for the surviving dog's care. Those dogs are now at a rescue centre run by Dumfries and Galloway Lost Dog. Link below. The Westminster government's firearms consultation is underway. And it includes proposals that could change shooting. Shooting organisations welcome the government's rejection of putting shotguns on firearm certificates, but say it's vital that shooters make their views known on more than a dozen other suggestions, including giving police more powers to search and seize guns from homes. The eight-week consultation ends on the 23rd of August, 2023. Public safety is absolutely a priority, and it was good to see that the government have said in the ministerial statement that any measures brought forward as a result of this consultation exercise must be proportionate and balanced, as the vast amount of firearms licensed users cause little concern and are indeed law-abiding. The Countryside Alliance is calling on the government to tackle the rural cost of living crisis. It says people living in the country have to travel more and subsequently spend around £2,000 more a year on fuel than their suburban counterparts. A report by the all-party parliamentary group on rural businesses found that people in country areas typically need to spend between 10 and 20 percent more on everyday requirements than those living in cities and built-up towns, despite wages being 7.5 percent lower. The Countryside Alliance says the government needs to act. Well, we believe that one of the key measures that the government could implement would be an urgent VAT cut on road fuel. Now, that's not something that the parliamentary committee, as I was discussing, decided to take forward. But they had a proposal which was expanding the reliefs available to, on fuel duty for people in rural areas. That also is something that the government could very strongly consider. More African countries are lining up to criticise the UK over its proposed ban on trophy imports. Zimbabwean conservationists are the latest to hit out at a private member's bill to ban the importing of hunting trophies to Britain. They claim it's based on emotions, not science. Zimbabwe Parks and Wildlife Authority say the bill from Rygate MP Henry Smith is misleading. It follows criticism from other African countries, including a visit to the UK by Botswana's Minister of Tourism last week, who recorded an exclusive interview with Field Sports News. A wolf has attacked a farmer in the Netherlands. The animal got through a 1.2 metre wolf proof fence to attack sheep. In an attempt to protect the animals, the farmer went in with a shovel. The wolf turned on the farmer. The farmer escaped, but the wolf jumped the fence and bit the farmer on the arm. He was treated in hospital. The mayor of the local town, Wapsa, ordered the wolf to be shot. Animal rights groups have now announced lawsuits and issued death threats against the farmer, the mayor and the police who shot the wolf. Thanks to Eric van der Horst for the story. And finally, a woman angler has caught a record-breaking carp at 63 pounds, which was almost half her size. Maria Bignall has broken the British women's carp record. She reeled in the fish at the waterside fishery in Chesham, Buckinghamshire. The fish is only four pounds short of the record for the biggest carp caught in Britain, which stands at 68 pounds one ounce. The avid fisherwoman who was on a trip with her husband Lee said she first thought she'd caught a tiddler when she got a bite, as the fish didn't put up much of a fight. It took her 30 minutes to reel in the catch, and it was only when she saw it in her net that she realised just how big it was. You can follow Ria's adventures on her Instagram account, at Women's Fishing World. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. 
talking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, we can get rid of David and get a really good quality broadcaster from the BBC, unless you click like below this film. Save David, click like. Now, Field Sports Live in Leicestershire is this Friday. It's in the Wycliffe Rooms in Lutterworth on the evening of Friday the 14th of July 2023, starting at 7.30pm. It's our 90-minute live show with licensed bar, special guests and local gun shop Giles Marriott. It's £10 a ticket, which you get back if you join the Field Sports Nation on the night. Sign-up link is below. Next, every couple of years, the world's top clay shooters get together in England to decide who's best. Last week was one of those times. <laughs> Who is the best sporting clay shooter in the world? Maybe the legendary George Digweed or Olympic gold medalist Richard Folds. Maybe one of the top American shooters like Anthony Matarese. Well, we're about to find out because the world's best shots are at the EJ Churchill shooting ground in Buckinghamshire to battle it out for the title of World English Sporting Champion. The ground is buzzing, with packed trade stands, food and refreshments, flags and banners giving the event a carnival atmosphere. Teams have travelled from all around the world, including Italy, Sweden, Jamaica and the USA, as well as Ireland and the home countries. They're all excited to be here, and some even have their eye on a world title. Here's former world champion Anthony Matarese. Uh, yeah, it's one of the biggest each year is the World Sporting Championship. You know, back home, our national championship is a, is a quite large competition as well. And we'll be going over to the uh, World FITAS Championship next week. But this is one of the biggest ones of the year. More than 1,600 people have booked on to shoot the World Championship, not to mention the other events running alongside it. The Sporting Prelim, World Sport Trap and World Super Sporting. The competition is made up of two 100-bird courses, blue and red, shot on consecutive days. England team manager Phil Eesman shot the red course on Monday when the weather was making things extra difficult. You know, I shot the sport trap in the morning um, in, in the wind and then I shot the main event in the wind in the afternoon. It got bad, didn't shoot very well. Um, shot the second half on the blue course on the, on the Tuesday in all the rain, so um, not a very good round for me but you know i enjoyed it so it's great now who's who's gonna win who's your money on to win the championship well i i had a little bet with andy castle uh, <laughs> before the event i won't say who i put my money on but um i'd like to see sam green win it now um i think for what the, the weather he shot in and you know the score he put in it was an unbelievable score um so uh, i personally think now he's he's the man to win it for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He and he's a browning shooter. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Talking of brownings, what sort of gun and cartridges do you need to compete at world level? Browning's David Stampley says why Top Shots favour the Ultra XS Pro. Everyone likes something different, but I mean, purely from a sales point of view, our Ultra XS Pro range is really, really popular at the moment. It seems to have hit the spot with a lot of sporting shooters purely because the, the amount of kit that you get with it, all the chokes and the, the pads and the triggers and uh, the weight systems, just seems to uh, hit the spot. And obviously it's a very reasonably priced gun as well compared to some of the, uh, the other big names out there. As for cartridges, 18-year-old AA-class shooter Josh Poyser is a big fan of Ely. He picks his shells to suit the targets in front of him. So I shoot Ely Superbs, so I use their 7.5, 28g and their 9s. Um, I also use VIP six and a halfs for anything a bit bigger. They're smooth, they're fast, and they just, they make you confident. I put a superb in and there's big targets all around this place. I put it in and I know that whatever bird is out there, I have confidence that these superbs or the VIPs or the Ely's, they, they're, gonna, they're gonna break that target. And if I put it in the right place, there'll be nothing left of it. It'll be a, a ball of dust in the air. Out on the course, things are getting interesting. Sam Green shot a superb 189 out of 200 early in the week, and so far that's held the lead. Close behind him are Phil Gray and French shooter Charles Badou, both on 185. George Digweed has dropped out of the running with a score of 177. 
Richard Folds won the Super Sporting, but his 183 won't be enough to make the final for the World Sporting title. That could all change, with the international team set to shoot both courses over the final two days. Last night, England beat the Americans in the traditional Yanks versus Brits competition. Now they're out shooting the main event in scorching heat. The ground looks superb and the targets are flying well. He's tried to catch you out with, with middies and 70 mils and standards flying through you know, gaps and stuff, but no, he, you know, he's bringing you from up high, down, down low, with sharp stuff going away. You know, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's trick shooting, but he's thought about it a lot and, and he's caught you out with, with angles. Anthony Matteris says that the Americans used to find our targets harder than the ones they saw at home, but not anymore. To be honest with you, I think at one point in time, yes, OK, we used to just shoot closer and slower. Um, but I feel like now we, we shoot with, at home with plenty of distance and speed, and I feel like the, the differences are, are, are less than ever. Uh, I shot a 91. It was not particularly great, in my opinion. I should have hit a few more. Uh, one gentleman in our squad, one of the American guys on our squad, uh, Brandon Powell, had a 97. That was a, that was a great score. Um, should be 94, 5, which is what you should have there, in my opinion, you know. So just a few birds off. Yeah, and still a course to go tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, so only halfway. Yeah, tomorrow's finals day. I've got the, I've got the, the um, I've had the um, team out on the red course today. They're sort of up and down with their scores a bit, but um, all sort of pretty much of an average score. Um, and then tomorrow we're out on the blue, um, and this time tomorrow we should all be done. So uh, we'll see where we all lie. Next day, as the England team arrives at its first stand, a thunderstorm rolls in and the umbrellas come out. It's not making the shooting any easier. The clouds soon clear and the England shooters finish the course in bright, humid conditions. Back at the clubhouse, the crowds eagerly watch the scores come in. Who will make the six-way super final? Sam Green's 189 still leads with the USA's Brandon Powell close behind on 187. Making up the final six all on 185 are Billy Greenwood, Charles Badou, Mark Windsor and Phil Gray. The Frenchman hasn't made it back to the ground for the final, so the other five step up to battle it out for the title in front of a huge crowd on the smart British shooting training layout. They carry their scores with them, so Sam starts with a two-target lead. After an impressive display of shooting over three stands, Sam just has to hit his last couple of targets to win. He's done it. Sam Green is the 2023 World English Sporting Champion. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah, it's, um, it's been the one to try and get. For on the bucket list um, and finally done it, yeah. Yeah, shot early in the week. Well, I think I've had rain sort of most days, but we uh, we had a monsoon. Managed somehow to go and put a, a 97 um, on the blue course. Um, I wouldn't want to go and do that again. Um, but yeah, it, it led the board all week, held the board, and then to go out in the Super 6 shoot off and perform and do it again, uh, it doesn't get better than that, really. It's fantastic, and to do it with the Browning Crown again um, to win two world titles, the Fitas and the Sporting with a Browning Crown. It doesn't get better than that. Yeah, it hasn't really still quite sunk in, but I fly out on Tuesday to Hungary to the Worlds, so that that's going to be next, <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. May well there'll be some celebrating. Yeah, time. hopefully I have a couple of beers when I get back. Fantastic. Cheers. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. Summer. You can find full results for the World English Sporting and the Associated Championships on the CPSA website. For more about Browning guns like the one Sam uses, go to browning.eu and for Ely cartridges, see elyhawklimited.com. Thanks all who took part in that and well done, Sam. Next up, it's good news for big game fishing. The Westminster government has finally got its act together and announced that we can catch bluefin tuna. Sport fishing for bluefin tuna is back. 
Skippers say landing the English Chart 2023 catch and release programme was a monster fight. Delays and lack of funding threatened its future. DEFRA dallying led to a last minute announcement, which is causing issues for some skippers. The good news is that in Cornwall, 25 vessels are cleared to take big game anglers out after Bluefin. The disappointing thing is that the decision has been so late and the confirmation has been so late coming and that's, that's had an effect on my business and the businesses of other charter skippers. Um, we kind of knew that it was going to go ahead this year but without that confirmation we've not been able to market the Bluefin tuna trips and anglers themselves that had some doubt as to whether it would go ahead have not booked the trips. So most of us are finding that at this moment in time our bookings are down compared to this time last year. In contrast to England, Wales and Northern Ireland received permission for the chart programme months before. In terms of Wales and Northern Ireland and Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland have got their own, uh, albeit smaller, chart programmes. I think five boats in Wales and and in Northern Ireland too. Not sure about Scotland yet. A total of 40 charter vessels are authorised to fish for Atlantic bluefin across the UK's western waters. But DEFRA says due to time constraints and funding pressure, it's not possible to run a training programme this year. This means the 2023 season is only open to skippers who participated in the 2021 or 2022 chart programmes. It's the same 25 skippers, but that's fine because they've already got uh, all the frameworks in place. They know, they know how to handle these fish properly. And, uh, you know, it's good news for them. It's good news for the Cornish economy, of course, because it will bring significant benefits in what is mostly the out, out, uh, out of season time. With the good news and the confirmation, we're hopeful that now we can get on the marketing and fill the days and have a fantastic bluefin tuna fishing season. Despite dragging its feet on the chart programme, the government has approved a pilot programme for a commercial fishery. We have a quota of 39 tonnes. Sounds like a lot, but actually it equates to probably only 300 fish. And what we're slightly worried about is uh, the targeting of the right type of fish. And by that we mean we don't want them necessarily to be catching pre-spawned fish. You know, fish that haven't actually spawned yet, because that would obviously be detrimental to the stock. But it's unlikely to be a significant issue in the pilot programme. Uh, we are slightly surprised that DEFRA was so eager to open this recreation, uh, this commercial fishery so quickly, presumably under pressure from the commercial fishing sector down in Cornwall. Having fought their way through red tape and what at times felt like an institutional dislike of sport fishing, anglers are thrilled to be able to catch bluefin tuna in British waters. Anglers are hoping eventually the success of the programme will persuade the government to licence a recreational fishery full time so more people can experience the thrill of landing bluefin tuna in British waters. We are hopeful that next year uh, a recreational fishery will be opened. There, there's been nothing decided or promised just yet. Uh, and the UK Bluefin Tuna Association, the Anglian Trust, are working very hard with DEFRA and government ministers to make this happen. Uh, there has to be some legislation in order to be able to license recreational anglers in the UK under ICAT rules to catch bluefin, uh, and that's causing a bit of a delay, but we're, we're hopeful uh, that a fishery will be open next year. I think anyone who's been lucky enough to legally go and catch bluefin tuna under char will tell you how good it's been. All of us, the, the, the few of us that have done it, are extremely privileged. But I think we really need to think about giving the opportunity to other people, anglers and skippers alike. So we need to move forward, I think, in future years with a recreational catch, tag, recovery and release programme. It will open up this fantastic fishery to all. And of course, if we have a recreational fishery in place, Maybe we can plan our years a little bit better and not have to wait until June for a decision on whether we're able to go and catch them or not. The 2023 bluefin fishing season starts on August 14th and ends on December 10th. See the links below. Thanks all who took part in that. Now there's a new rifle scope on offer. Ryan Charlton from Highland Outdoors talks us through the long distance offering from US optics company Maven. 
Okay, so a little bit about Maven Optics. Maven are based in Wyoming over in America and their entire company and their company's philosophy has been founded on no compromise optics for hunting the backcountry up in the mountains where you need your optics to perform at its best. They use the very best materials and components that they can to make sure that they give an exceptional finished product which keeps in with their signature styling. Whether that's with their binoculars, whether that's with their range of rifle scopes from this, the big 34 mil tube 5 to 30 down to their more simple 3 to 12 and everything in between. Maven are so keen to make sure that the user gets a full, no compromise, exceptional experience from using the Maven product. So this is Maven's RS4 5 to 30 56 rifle scope. Got a choice of reticles in here. This one has Maven's CFR reticle, which is mill based, ideally suited for long range varminting, precision rifle, anything where you may want to dial up. Really cool thing on this reticle is it, has 0.2 mil gradients on the uh, vertical line, which it means if you're gonna be using holdover to shoot at distance, you can adjust your aiming point very, very finely. Now, if you want to go super fine, the adjustments on the elevation turret are lovely and positive. We've got nice big numbers on here and the feel of the elevation and windage turret along with the magnification is exceptional because of the knurling on here. The elevation turret and the windage turret can be returned to zero using the tallest reset mechanism. You simply unscrew it, return it back, and away you go. Beneath the turret is also the zero stop system as well. So once you've got the scope zeroed and you're dialed in, you're ready to go. The magnification ring has a indicator on here as well so you always know where you're at. The parallax comes down to just below 15 yards and quite uniquely the reticle is illuminated in red or green so if you're shooting PRS for example against a dark backstop when the reticle is illuminated green it's really going to pop and stand out against the dark background. Now Maven's ED lenses and their exceptional lens coatings mean that not only does the reticle stand out, but so does your target. It gives you really good edge clarity and exceptional contrast as well. One of Maven's philosophies is that they don't compromise on the glass. And once you look through this, I think you'll agree they've achieved it. Now, this is available from all Highland Outdoor stockists. What comes in at under £2,000, it's £1,800 and 89.99. Thanks Ryan. Now from Kit to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube brought to you by James Marchington. It's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. First up this week, Andy Crow travels to the Atlas Mountains in Morocco for an exciting day shooting high, fast Barbary partridges with Jack Pike and Atlas Sporting. Over to Texas, and it's a bow hunting tournament where the team that shoots the greatest weight of pigs wins a cash prize. Staying in the States, MFK game calls are after a coyote that's been killing goats and chickens, using a variety of calls to bring the perpetrator into range. Meanwhile, in the UK, Pontypool Pest Control is shooting rabbits around the horse paddocks using an FX Impact Mark III air rifle in 177, accompanied by the usual dry humour in the voiceover. Here's a cry for help from the Deercast channel. In order to keep going, they need to boost their subscriber numbers. They've got some great content, so pop over and give them some support. Next, a stalking story from Wiltshire. Hunter-gatherer cooking is out at 4am after Rowan Munchak, where the landowner wants the deer culled to limit damage to woodland regeneration. After several failed attempts, they finally take this nice roebuck and talk through the gralloch. 
This is the first one from a brand new gun review channel, presented by the very knowledgeable Matthew Morgan, who was previously with Premier Guns at Doveridge. In this one, he takes an in-depth look at a rare example of a 1970s Maruku president. Finally this week, here's a thoughtful film from Seiko, with former Irish Special Forces soldier Willow Mira looking at how we can explain the hunter's mindset and win over the general public. That's it for this week, we've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email Charlie the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. And that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain, it's out 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.